Good morning. St. Stephen's United Methodist Church, and as we said, today is a very special day uh, because today is our children's Sabbath Sunday, so they are going to be leading us in worship. They've already begun, and we welcome you uh, to our church. We have several announcements I want to go through, uh, so please remember to take a look at your bulletin insert that's in your bulletin and make sure you pay close attention to everything that's going on because there's a lot going on in this church. Uh, first of all, this afternoon is the 41st annual uh, Cleveland County Crop Walk, and St. Stephen's is one of the founding members of that Crop Walk, and that's going to be today at 2 o'clock, but we need to be there at 1.30. And for more information, I'm going to invite Becky up to say just a few words. Yes, today is our Crop Walk, and we um, just so appreciate all the support from St. Stephen's. It's just been phenomenal. Um, we hope you'll join us to help raise funds to support food and shelter here in Norman and the Global Hunger Fighting Efforts of Church World Service. The Crop Walk begins at 1.30. I mean, the, this, I'm sorry, I need to read the script because I don't have to. Okay. The registration begins at 1.30 with the send-off at 2 o'clock. And we want our St. Stephen's members to come and have a group photo, so we're asking that we all meet at 1.40 by the rocking chairs. Um, the carpooling is encouraged. We are, this is a new location for Bob Walk. It's at the Ruby Grant Park at 36th and Tecumseh, or sort of, 36th Avenue Northwest between Tecumseh and Franklin. If the West Pavilion is full, there are two other parking lots, and our church van, driven by Alyssa, will be going around to the parking lots to pick people up to bring them, because it's, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of parking available. Um, for their, we need everybody who's walking to register at the, uh, the tent. If you have a donation envelope, please bring it to the registration, and remember to include St. Stephen's team name on your envelope. Um, and I think that's it. You know, the kids and youth are invited to, to carry their own signs for Crop Walk, and there will be cash prizes awarded. So there's still time to join us, or you can support our, our team online at Cleveland County Crop Walk. Dot org. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Becky. Oh, and then tonight, oh. Sorry. Trustee Work Day. Oh, Trustee oh, Work Day. Oh, it forgot to be put in the shield and on the announcements. Trustee work day is next Saturday from 9 until noon. And I know there are a lot of other things going on, but I just wanted to, to see if we could get some more folks to help us keep the grounds looking beautiful. Okay, we have uh, later th uh, this afternoon, after Crop Walk at 4.30 is our fall roundtable uh, discussion. Uh, and the potluck begins at 4.45, and we still need people to sign up uh, for food. Uh, if you are interested in bringing something, please sign up. We also need people on our cleanup crew. Was that all of them? Did I get them all, Brent? Okay. Our speaker tonight, uh, the, the uh, speaking portion will begin at 5.30, but the, but the potluck is at 4.45. And we will have former city council uh, uh, leader Lee Hall. Uh, is going to be sharing with us the challenges of uh, homelessness in our community and how we can work to uh, alleviate uh, homelessness within our community. And so we're really excited about her coming. Also, next Sunday, October 27th, is also a very big day for us. It is our Pledge Sunday, and you should have received earlier this week a letter from uh, myself and Susan Arn, our Administrative Council Chair, with a pledge card in it. And it's a letter of encouragement, and we want to really encourage you to consider what your gift will be for next year, because we've got some big plans for 2025 that you're going to hear more about as we get a little bit further down the road. Uh, but we encourage you to bring that card to worship. Don't fill it out beforehand. Fill it out once you get here, because who knows, maybe the preacher's sermon will move you some incredible way, yeah, and uh, so, and then during the service, we'll bring those gifts forward, and they will be consecrated. Now, if you didn't get a pledge card, and you would like to pledge for next year, there are pledge cards and copies of the letter all out on the table right across from the administrative offices there. Uh, then, after church, is our clergy appreciation uh, time. And that is on the 27th, immediately following our second service. 
And I need to tell you, uh, I am thrilled to be here and what a wonderful church this is. And as much as you appreciate me, I appreciate all of you. But what's even more so is you need to know that we have a wealth of clergy here within our congregation. And we're going to show our appreciation to all of them for all their years of ministry. I'm not even sure I've lost count. I think there's 12 clergy associated with this congregation, which is pretty amazing. And so we really want to encourage all of you to be a part of that. Then, uh, also next Sunday, October 27th, is our chili cook-off and trunk or treat from 4 to 6. There are sign-up sheets out in the loggia, and I can tell you that Alyssa will tell you we still need some people to sign up to be the trunks. Uh, so, did that come out right now? So, trunks, yeah. So, yeah, uh, we need people who are willing to do that. We only have about seven or eight who are going to do that, and so we need quite a few more. So, if you're willing to, please sign up or talk to Alyssa, and she will help you. Uh, she, the, yeah, the youth may be willing to decorate your car if you have that kind of courage. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, so, I'll do my own regret, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, and then I wanted to let you know that our administrative council meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night has been moved to the 28th. Uh, I think that covers all of our announcements. And so let us now begin our morning worship.
morning. I am going to tell you a story this morning, and she didn't know I was going to do this, but it's about my daughter, Amber. Now, Amber, you know Amber over there? Yeah. <laughs> about 14 years ago, Amber was a very tiny, very cute, very happy little baby. And I was a youth fell choir director, or fell choir director, at a church in Iowa. And uh, that church, the youth choir and bell choirs, took a trip in the summer where we would go uh, sing at churches in another city and then do a little sightseeing and such too. And we'd go to uh, assisted livings or things like that to sing for the people. So it was sort of a musical mission. And when Amber was about five months old or so, it was time to do one of those trips, and I was the bell director, and so they said, okay, just bring her with you. So I had little baby Amber on the bus the whole time, and she came to all of our uh, events and performances. One day, we went to a kind of an assisted living center, uh, and the youth sang, gave their, uh, their concert for the people there. They sang and they played bells and they were wonderful. And most of the people there were just, were very happy listening to them. Except there was this one woman who was just off in the corner. She was a little frail old woman. She didn't have very many teeth left and she just stood in the corner by herself looking lonely. And she didn't really ever make much of an expression through the whole time the kids were there. But then after the performance, the youth were visiting with the uh, residents there and they were having snacks together. And I was carrying Amber around and this woman, she starts indicating for me to come. So, okay, so we went over and I don't think she spoke a whole lot of English either, but she, she was motioning for us to come. And I kind of looked at some of the workers there, and they were like, oh, yeah. And so she took us up to her apartment. And she went into her apartment, and she definitely it, it smelled like smoke. It was messy, and it was a little bit um, not where we'd usually take a baby. But she went in her apartment, and she brought out three little hats that she had knitted and she had been waiting for somebody to give these little hats to and even though these little hats smelled like smoke she put one on amber's head and amber just smiled and this woman smiled her big toothless grin and she followed us back out to where all the youth were and we had a big group photo where Amber and I are standing in the middle right next to this lady with her big, huge, toothless smile, and Amber has this little hat on her head. So, something that I learned from that trip is the plan there was for the youth to bring this music to the people, and they did. They touched a lot of people. But this little itty-bitty baby, she brought joy to somebody that wasn't touched by what the older people were doing. And she did that just by being friendly, by smiling. And you know, Amber actually kind of kept doing that sort of stuff. As she got older, she would participate in church, and she would always give hugs to the people that, uh, that smiled at her. She would color little drawings during church. And then when somebody who was kind of lonely came up to her afterwards and they always liked to smile and wave at her, she would say, here, I made this for you. And they would feel so good. So I know today is Children's Sunday, which is amazing, and you guys are doing everything. You're doing it so well. But every single Sunday in church, you have an important part. There are things you can do to bring joy. There are things that you can do to lead, to sing, and to set an example for the grown-ups. Because sometimes we need to see the way children love to remember how we're supposed to love. 
And one last thing, I want to just take a moment. Miss Jen, our fearless leader, has done so much to make this Children's Sunday, Children's Sabbath come together, and has put so much work into it. This is uh, representative of hours and hours and hours, and she is home sick this morning. And so I want us all to turn towards this camera right here because she is watching us. And we all, on the count of three, are going to say, we love you, Miss Jen. You can do congregation. One, two, three. We love you, Miss Jen. Hearts. Very good. All right, children who are part of Children's Sabbath can return over to the chairs and other children can. <laughs> Today's scripture reading, Isaac chapter 11, 1 from 8. A shot, a shell comes out from a stub of a Jesus. Jesse's and the branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of control and righteousness, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or to con by what his ears hear, but he will ridicule, he shall judge by it on the poor. And the side of equity for the meek of the earth, he shall strike the earth with the rod of man, and with the breath of his lips he shall pick it, kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion, and the lion together, and the little child shall be Qualify for free or reduced meals. In total, 
57.29% of the students in Norman qualify. This school year, nine elementary schools, one middle school, and Dimensions Academy received a grant that provides free breakfast and lunch to all students. Almost 600 students are sent home every week from school with a backpack of food to get through the weekend, and two bags per student are sent home over extended breaks. Norman Public Schools currently has over 200 students that are categorized as homeless, meaning they do not have permanent residence, are either in a shelter, staying with family or friends, or a hotel, and each year this number increases. Food and Shelter for Friends, a local organization who need, works to empower people in need of food, homes, and help, currently has 26 children living on site. These are not statistics from Oklahoma City, Tulsa, or Dallas. This is our own backyard. These are students living in our neighborhoods who go to schools just down the street from here. These are kids she has the privilege of caring for every single day. Her job description states that she keeps track of enrollment, attendance, and records, but what she actually does is much bigger. She loves kids. She tells parents when they drop their kids off in the morning, their kids are now her kids, and she will love them as her own. What she often sees is kids who come to school to be loved. She has several kids who get to school, and the first thing they do is come to the office to get their Miss Jane hug. They chat about this or that. She asks if they had breakfast. She gives them a word of encouragement for the day, a big hug, and sends them on their way. She knows that often she is the first adult to acknowledge them in their day. Her coworkers call her Jen Swift, as she often has a line of kids patiently waiting their turn. And if she misses a morning of work, she gets an earful when she returns. Those kids need her. They need consistency, stability, and love, and they know Miss Jen in school is a safe place. A few years ago, an enrollment center was opened where families could go and enroll their students during the summer. When secretaries returned to work in July that year, a friend told her a story of a dad who reached out and refused to go to the center as he did not know these people and they did not know him. And he said his family needed the people at their school. The dad arrived at the school for his appointment and gave an update. He and the kids were homeless, living at the Salvation Army shelter. He was ashamed and would not look up. Together, they worked on solutions to their immediate needs, new clothes, school supplies, etc. A few weeks after school started, his daughter brought her friend a note she had written for a class project on filling others' buckets. The note read, I know you know things about me, and I appreciate you letting me be here, and I would love to talk to you if I ever need to. Thank you so much. Another story she heard is a student who is hard, like really hard, in trouble often for fighting, bullying others, and stealing. He was recently seen at a nearby grocery store paying for two toothbrushes with change. He told his school that as soon as he turned 16, he is dropping out of school, working fast food, and getting food stamps so he can feed himself and two younger siblings. His mom struggles with addiction. She is the only parent. He is 10 years old. There are hundreds of stories like these happening every day. Kids that stay with us and break our hearts again, right here in our own backyard. God knows the pain of the children, and this is illustrated in how Jesus came to earth. Mary and Joseph, his parents, eagerly anticipating the birth of their child, were temporarily housing insecure, relying on the kindness of strangers to give them shelter and a meal, giving a helping hand in their hour of greatest need. In our scripture reading today from Isaiah, there is a foreshadowing that God's chosen one, the one who would come to undermine the establishment of ruling power, would be a child. A child who comes into the world in a makeshift house, a manger, with parents who did not know what was going to happen next. Nothing is more innocent and beautiful than a child. She sees a lot of sadness and heartache, but kids give her hope and belief that it is all going to be okay. They ask her so little. Have you ever felt judged from a child? She has. She was teased because she could not name all the characters on Paw Patrol. <laughs> when was the last time someone asked you your favorite dinosaur? For her, it was last spring. It's a brody brodiosaurus, if you're wondering. Or had a first grader demonstrate the new shoes that make them run faster? Lights on the bottom have the ability to make you rocket fast. Ever had a child you don't know just walk up to you and hold out their arms to be held, completely trusting that you will take care of them? These are the things that should matter to a child. These are the only things that they should worry about, and yet we all know many have much bigger problems. So what now? What do we do? How do we make a difference? The purpose of Children's Sabbath is advocating for the quality of care of all children. So how do we do that? She believes it begins with relationships. If she thinks back to the memories of her childhood and church, she does not recall learning all the books of the Bible or specific scriptures, but she does remember how people and how they made her feel. She remembers Vanita teaching her bells and choir, 
and her smile when they finally made beautiful music. She remembers her Sunday school teacher, Dewey Selman, a giant man in stature and in heart who gave the best hugs and still does every time she sees him and his wife Catherine, who always made you feel like you're the only person on earth who mattered. Mrs. Cooper, her grandmother's lifelong friend who always lit up when she saw her and opened her arms for a running hug. Sharon Ray, who made youth snack suppers every week and once threatened to quit when it was suggested that she give up using real butter in her cookies. <laughs> she wanted the best for her kids. When she looks around St. Stephen's, my family's church home for the last five years, she thinks about the people who love my family and who her children are making the same types of memories with. Ron House, her hilariously inappropriate dad, who greets her with a hug and kiss and always asks, how's it going, kid? Velma House, Valerie Underwood, Mary Lee, to name a few who make her feel a mother's love. Jane and David Wilson Burns, her brother and sister, aunt and uncle to her children, who share mission trip memories and have inside joke, jokes with her kids. Ron Ward, my dad's kooky twin brother. Marcy Corey, who me and Nora refer to as our queen. Susan Arn, who encourages her and tells her what a great mom she is and bakes her cookies. Alyssa Miller, her daughter who calls my dad for advice. Elijah, who calls my parents, mom and dad, and comes to our house after church so we can ride to youth with his sisters, me and Nora. She can give a hundred other examples, but as she listens to her children talk about their time and experiences at St. Stephen's, she sees and hears them talk about a family. And as a family, we are bound to each other. We are all invested in growing the children, our children, so that they know they are deeply loved and leave this place spreading that love to the rest of the world. Empowering our children to change the world in the smallest of ways by teaching them to be the hands and feet of Christ. It means supporting our kids with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. Give your time and get to know these kids. Did you know Izzy loves camping? Or that Theo does CrossFit and his favorite is dumbbells. Phoebe is a really good gymnast. Juliet has goats and chickens at her school. Or that Cassidy takes hip hop dance. How about Denny, who randomly stops and thinks sometimes. And that Hattie cannot remember if she was born in Oregon or Washington. <laughs> Your time and presence are what matters. You don't want to teach Sunday school or play an event. You don't have to. Vanita McGorman, who has dedicated much of her life to being of service to kids, my mom and her have a deal. She doesn't make my mom sing or choose curriculum, and my mom doesn't make her do arts and crafts. <laughs> Tell her what you like doing, and she will find a place for you. Come to Sunday Night Live and hang out with our kids. Get to know them. Find out what matters to them, their favorite dinosaur, what sport they play and show them the love that fills this place. You will not regret it. Outside of these walls, call a local school or organization that serves Norman kids and ask how you can help. Food and Shelter has a child with diabetes who walks to school with low blood sugar and needs snacks to carry with them. Kennedy, Reagan, and Wilson are always in need of extra snacks for their students. Do they need volunteers to read to kids, chaperones on field trips? Let them know what you are available to do and they will find a spot for you. Want to show appreciation to those doing the day, doing the work, day in and day out. Drop off Sonic drinks. Flavor? Doesn't matter. Someone will drink it, and I promise it'll be the person who needed it the most that day. Write a random note, or just call the school and say thank you. They rarely hear it. The acts do not have to be enormous. They just have to be done with love. And finally, the philosophy, spirit, and love of St. Stephen's cannot end with us. We must spread it to the world, and that starts with how we teach children of St. Stephen's, our children, they belong to all of us. We are obligated as United Methodists and humans to follow John Wesley's instructions, which reflects his belief that love is active, inclusive, and enduring. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And that begins with our children. Thank you.
Please join me in the offertory prayer. Lord, creator of all who bless us, please join us in the growth and betterment of this church, our community, and the world as a whole, according to your will. Amen.
join in our final hymn in the red hymnal, number 191, Jesus. 